Hello, I am PD Master Corey Russell, and the following is, is a game. Uh, it was a bird's opening. That was black, and it, it, <clears throat> you can use it to help you under, uh, learn how to play against the bird if you're black. And and bird is by the way one out four. Um, in addition, it's also a highly instructive end game. So let's uh, let's take a look uh, what happened here. This is the bird. D5 is a good response to the bird. Um, Peter Shedding the bishop. G6 is a good response for black. So black wants to castle rapidly. Um, black also wants to attack the center with C5. Both sides castle. And now, now that we're castled and C5 is in, Peter the other bishop also works well. Um, probably because it fights for the e4 square, which is an important square for both sides. All right, all minor pieces are developed. So the reason for this move is twofold, actually. It protects the bishop, which means like c4 is a bad move for white because I'll just take the pawn. Um, and in addition, it stops e5 because then black can win a pawn with knight e5. So, um, and it connects the rooks too as well. So, um, it's a pretty, all in all, it's a pretty flexible move. And in addition, there's also other tricks. For example, if b3, uh, and then black can play take, take here. And if the bishop were on free, which it's not, it's not right now, but if it were, then it would double attack with two pieces. Uh, and by the way, Fritz, that's a chess software, says so the position is equal. So, um, white attacks. Uh, this is a very common reroute to route to d6. So, on d6, so control e4, but the main point is two points of rerouting the knight. One is it'll open up the bishop, so now the bishop's power is exposed. And secondly, this. At some point, we'll prepare S6 and E5, and E5 is a key freeing break for black. Uh, in which, if it cut is reverse, that's also the key, you know, E4 with a key uh, break for white. So this is a very common maneuver. All right, keep my knight there. Take the knight, take back. Um, this is play because I might want to play rook E8. Uh, and I don't want to worry about any bishop b5 kind of stuff. Alright, preparing my break. I try to stop it. I try to force it in. Try to force it in. I finally get the break. Pins me. Uh, so, kind of need a ticket here. Now, I'm turning to e4. Got a ticket. Check. And of course, I can't take the rook because the rook is checking the queen, so I gotta take the king. He checks, of course, no spread there. Get a king out of the way. White takes, which is actually a good move for interference. And now he's goal again. Um, what? Oh, I, I know why. I don't want him to fix my pawns with d5. So, that's why I play that. So, now I reroute the rook. So we're going to try to, try to open lines on the queen side, so I'm trying to do. Massive build up on the queen side, as you can see. C4. And 
so this is a really good move. I maintain the tension. Rather than taking it right away, I maintain the tension so I can break on my long term. I guess like, whoops, I need to do that. Uh, so now I have to take a pawn. And the bishop. And now it's key, time for a key strategic and tactical strike. D4. And now, now that white's tied down, I would not use the opportunity to get my king closer to the battle. Now attack his king side. Of course, up here isn't solved anything because the chair cannot get the pawn anyways. So. Although it would save the H pawn temporarily, so maybe maybe that would be okay. But. I think it's fun. This is a good try. However, I don't take the bishop because that would be why it'd be equal. Instead, I play h5, which is a strong response. Should I come? Notice the bishop and pawn together form a kind of um, a row that the enemy king can't penetrate. Um, that was a mistake. He should not move his king there. So I'm going to take his rook. And now my king does decisive infiltration. This is play because I, I I need to keep an eye on this pawn, so I want to be be sure I'm in a good position. My king's gonna mop up. Oh, there's still some work to be done because white going to the bishop. But I do get three pawns. So the question is, is a vicious stronger or is a pawn stronger? Um, in this case, the pawns are far side; they're far away from each other, so uh, which makes it difficult for the bishop and king to cover everything. Uh, okay. So anyways, oh, you did d7, yeah. And, oh, it's my turn. Um, that's where I got my king closer. And of course, I sack, which is important. Go pawns, go pawns. So here, he should get, his king should just keep an eye on my h pawn, actually. He, he has to hope his bishop can stop, which he can't, actually. But for example, he should try this, and then I might try like this. He might go here, and I go here. So he can, he can win my pawns, but the bishop can't. The, basically, the problem is the bishop, you know, the bishop can't stop these pawns, um, and, the, and the king can't stop these pawns either, actually. So, um, there, white's in a hard place. White tries to get. The, so, uh, what actually happened here? Um, so, d7, take, take. Uh, of course, I got to be five or before. I mean, I'm gonna try to bring his king to battle. B3, and then his king's cut off. And unfortunately, for white, whoops, not that. So he stops the B pawn, kind of, and now for the killer blow, H3, and now the bishop is a royal. If he takes the H pawn, of course, a queen. Uh, the king is too far away and can't stop it. Um, but if he doesn't take the h1, of course, he'll have a queen. So, no matter what, I'm going to get a queen. And then, plus, I have still an extra pawn, so it should be an easy one. So, in any case, I hope this was helpful for you guys, and I'll see you next time.